All right, what we have here is a 300 six cylinder, 1976 model. Fixing to do a rebuild on it for a guy for a chipper. He had to bore the block 40 over and uh, get any pistons and all that stuff. Had a little bit of wear in it from low oil, you know, people running them low in oil and stuff over the years. I mean, this, this 70, you know, this thing's a, over 40 years old, so it's, but it's still running. We just had to do a little bit more to it, but my main reason for doing this video is because there's a lot of questions. Different people's asked me over the years about different things, but the 300 is a little bit different than most of your V8s and so on and so forth, but make sure that you put your bearings in correctly. Um, seen a lot of problems with this. You've got an upper shell which is your main cap. You've got a special bearing for it, and it's solid. If you notice, this thing's got a groove right here. And it's got a hole in the block right there. That's where oil gets pumped from the oil pump out of the pan through the filter and then through the motor for the crankshaft to get oil. If you put those solid ones right there, you're not going to get any oil on that bearing. So pay attention when you go to rebuild these things because this upper one has no hole in it whatsoever. There's no hole in the in the bearing itself. So when you go to put that thing together, if you put that bearing I just showed you here. You're going to destroy everything in the motor because it's not getting oil, oil to it. <clears throat> you shouldn't, you shouldn't, uh, you should be able to, you know, pay attention to that, read all your books, read all your specifications, and uh, torque everything down correctly. Don't get in a hurry. Make sure you clean the block really good. Clean all those passages, blow them out with air. Um, Keep this thing as clean as you can. Keep your hands as clean as you can. Do not touch those surfaces once you clean them and put your assembly lube on it. Don't touch those surfaces on those bearings. Any little bitty particle of dirt off your fingers will cause a problem. Uh, a lot of people use motor oil to Assemble a motor, Vaseline. I've used everything from Vaseline, motor oil, whatever, but I like the assembly lead. I used to race the little Ford 2300s, put assembly lube on them. We turned them motors really, really hard. And the assembly lube never let me down. Um, if you break the motor in, prime the oil pump and all that stuff you shouldn't really have a problem anyway but a lot of people don't know how to prime the pump so on first initial startup use just some assembly lube and then a lot of people use royal purple motor oil um to break in a motor they use additives and all that stuff um what I use, and a lot of people go, well, why would you use diesel diesel oil in your gas burner? Well, uh, Rotella has actually, Shell Rotella has actually came up with a, a motor oil, which is 1030, and it's got all your zinc additives in it. This is the oil I'll be running in that motor because it's got everything you need to break that motor in correctly i know it says heavy duty diesel oil and all that stuff it's 1030 motor oil in there it'll work great to break that motor in and you'll not have any problems with the camshaft or none of that kind of bearings any of that stuff during break-in services but when you go to put your lifters in you put them in some lightweight oil 
soaked them in some lightweight oil. I've used transmission fluid even. Won't hurt anything. But uh, most of the time I try to use like a 5, 5 W30 motor oil to push all that air out of there just to kind of help it, you know, put a little bit of oil over in those lifters. Adjusting the valves on these things are a little bit aggravating, but we'll try to make another video when we're uh, dealing with this thing. The guy wanted this thing a kind of a caterpillar yellow because this thing ain't going in a truck. It's actually going on a piece of equipment. It goes on a chipper. So as I'm going through here, I'll try to make you another video of uh, different stuff. If you have any questions, you can contact Bobby at 678. 725-9953 that number again 678-725-9953 um, if I can help you on you know any questions that you may have or whatever um, but uh, when, when, if, you, if you're a novelist and don't understand a lot of this stuff get you one of these books a lot of them you can download on the internet or whatever. Or call me. I'll read what it says out of the book. What I wrote down here, I just made, went through the book, made myself some notes, a little cheat sheet, to where I can go down through here and I can go, oh, my main bearing bolts, my rod bearing bolts, uh, my head bolts, uh, crank pulley bolts, flywheel bolts, so on and so forth. All the way down to uh, the rocker arm bolts. Now, those rocker arm bolts on those things, some of them are deadheaded. They're, they got a little perch on them right here. And it goes all the way down and locks in there. But some of the older ones are adjustable, especially on like your little 240s, 240 motors or whatever. The best thing to do with a, with a, six, a, a 300 six cylinder is put a 240 head on them. It gives you a little bit more compression. Um, on a 240 or 240 head on a 300 gives you a little bit more compression on it but uh, the biggest thing I found with these little 6 cylinders 300s they got a great big old board these are big heavy motors but for the bigger board it is it ain't got a whole lot of power and every bit of it has to do with 90% of it has to do with that camshaft it don't lift the valves far enough uh, you change your cam in these things and put you a good high lift cam, a good like a 106 center line or whatever. You really want to talk about these little motors coming alive, they'll come alive. But just remember the RPMs on these things are okay. But if you're going to try to turn it any high RPMs, get you some good rods and rod bolts. That's your life of your motor. Uh, check your clearances on your pistons and things on a cast piston you know it's, it's okay right out of the box but I still check them um, but when you go through the process of when, when you go make one of these a real torque monster with a little bit of horsepower or turbo or whatever that camshaft means a lot have any questions you can give me a call 678-725-9953